Get ready for an absolutely ridiculous TIC level story. So how did I get my Chinese driver's license? You know, this is a class C1E driver's license, which means I can drive manual cars, uh, normal cars, and motorbikes. Um, and it's still valid until the year 2026. This is my second Chinese driver's license. The first one lasts six years. And then when you renew, then you get one that uh, lasts for 10 years. Anyway, here it is, it's valid, I have it. But there's a very interesting story as to how I got this license in the first place. Now, unfortunately, as you can hear, it's pouring down buckets over here. I was supposed to be out in the car filming a very special episode for you guys, but that'll be coming next week. Sunshine, palm trees, the lot, I promise you. Anyway, anyone who's lived in China or knows about how the wheels of government and law and whatever turn in China knows that everything is not as it seems. Sure, you're supposed to be able to do things, but most of the time, even the police don't actually know the laws and, and what's happening. And if you try and do something, more often than not, especially if you're a foreigner, you're going to hit a brick wall. So, you know, driver's license. I wanted to buy a car. This is back in 2010. I bought my little car, my little Chinese car. So I went and I put down the money and I bought the car, but of course I can't drive it without a driver's license. And in fact, one of the stipulations when I bought the car was that when I was going to pick the car up, I had to present my driver's license before I could drive it off of the showroom floor, which I suppose is reasonable. So I went about studying for the driver's test. I was, however, rudely shocked to find out that Although they were offering an English language written test in a few cities, it was complete gobbledygook. The questions didn't make sense. It was like a machine translated thing that, you know, you could read the questions, but they didn't make any sense. So it's almost impossible to answer them. And let me dial this back a little bit. If you're a foreigner and you want a driver's license in China, there are a couple of things that you're going to need. First of all, you need a, a minimum of a six month uh, sort of residence permit. So you need a visa that is allowing you to stay for more than six months at a time. So that means things like tourist visas, even if you have a 10-year tourist visa, it doesn't count because you're not allowed to stay for six months. You have to exit and enter every 30 days or every 60 days or whatever it is. So you need something like a, a work visa, a spousal visa, uh, a long-term student visa, something like that, which will allow you to then have the, those six months. Anyway, that's not uh, the most important thing. Taking a driver's test in China is very, very difficult. And if you want to start from scratch, you have to complete X amount of hours at a driving school where you have to sit with an instructor. This is mandatory. You can't skip this if you're starting from scratch. And there's all sorts of other bollocks. Anyway, skip all that nonsense. If you already, like myself, have a valid license in your own country, you can get a driver's license in China, but you have to sit the written test. So you don't need to sit, um, you know, in the driven test or anything like that, but you will have to sit down and write the written test, which is all fair and good, and I've got no problems with that. But the fact that the written test, at least when I was writing it, the English questions were gobbledygook, and you could only get English questions at some bigger city test centers. You wouldn't be able to, say, for instance, be in a, a small town and and go write the test, it would only be in Chinese. So here comes the other annoying part. You need to have your English name translated into, uh, officially translated into a Chinese name. You can't put your English name on your Chinese driver's license. It makes sense, if you're going to be put into the system, you need a Chinese name. So that's a bit of a ball ache, to be honest. You have to go out and you have to get someone to do that. It has to be done officially. Um, by like a translation company or some, some, or some other thing. That's another step you have to do. So what led to this hilarious situation which I'm about to tell you? Well, I was getting sick and tired of all the red tape. And what most people do in China, and this is due to the fact that you've got such a large population, right? Instead of standing in queues, instead of filling out forms and doing all these different things, people often pay agents to do these things for them. I mean, there's always someone willing to sit in the queue for you and charge you for it, that type of thing. So I contacted a, an agency, an agency that helps foreigners with things like driver's licenses. 
Now, I'm not going to mention their name because you know, you'll see why. It obviously would be in poor taste. But I told them my situation. Hey, I need a driver's license. I need my name translated into Chinese because I don't have that. I have a valid driver's license from back home. Oh, and that's another thing. Your home license has to be translated into Chinese as well uh, by a, a recognized translation company. It has to have a stamp on it. It has to be all legitimate and, and all that sort of thing, which makes sense. So they're like, sure, OK. Send us all your information. Send us your driver's license, uh, copies of your driver's license and stuff. And uh, what we'll do, and this, this, is, this is how it happened. They're like, OK, send us all the, the documentation. And then we will take you to write the test. Um, you have to come and meet us in Guangzhou, which is kind of the capital of Guangdong. We're about an hour and a bit away on a train from where I was living in Shenzhen. Come and meet us in Guangzhou on such and such a date in such and such a hotel. So I thought, OK, sounds legit. So I'm going to send in my papers. They're going to translate them for me. And then they're going to take me to write the test. So there I was, studying my ass off, trying to figure out all the weird Chinglish questions. I got all the, as many answers as I could online. Um, and guys, I've, I've got a South African driver's license. I've got an American California driver's license. And I've got a Chinese driver's license. I've written driver's licenses all over the world. And, and trust me, China is a completely different kettle of fish. Anyway, so here I am studying all the questions and stuff, and the day arrives. Now it's time for me to go up to Guangzhou and meet this agent in a hotel. So I board the train. I'm busy studying my notes for the, the, the test. And I go all the way up to Guangzhou, uh, take a taxi to the hotel. And there I am in the foyer of the hotel, or the lobby. And I notice there's a bunch of other nervous looking foreigners sitting around there too, probably about 15 of them or so. And I was like, you guys don't happen to be here for the driver's license test. You know, that's not why you're here, are you? And they're like, yeah, we're here for that. And everyone turns out everyone was there for that. Everyone thought that they were going to be going individually, but it turns out they obviously just got a huge group they filled up their quota of however many foreigners and got them all to meet at the same time, same place. So here we are, a bunch of, like a ragtag bunch of foreigners. We've got people from high sort of um, executive positions, CEOs of companies types, you know, all dressed up. You've got sort of uh, ESL teachers and, you know, kind of quite a mixed bag if you were to look at them. Um, however, I must stipulate that any foreigner who actually gets to the, to the point of driving in China, is usually quite committed to the China experience. They're usually either married or they're there long term um, or they have a business or something because it's, it's incredibly difficult to go through the process of buying a car, registering a car. If you're a foreigner, it's super difficult to register a car and to get your driver's license and things like that. So it's usually only the very serious people that end up uh, getting a driver's license. Anyway, that aside, once everyone was there, we were met by uh, a middle-aged woman who with kind of choppy English told us to all get on a bus. So we thought, okay, all right, they're gonna take us down to the testing station now, right? Wrong. <laughs> we got to sit on this like rickety sort of minibus for about two and a half, three hours, driving into the middle of nowhere in Guangdong, up into some mountainous, hilly area, through some rural villages, and we end up in this very, very rural driving sort of uh, testing station type thing. I mean, when I say rural, it's literally they've got chickens walking around in the parking lot. It's, it's run down. It's, it's ridiculous. And there's a ton of locals lined up waiting to get in there. Uh, bear in mind, this is very early in the morning, so you know it's just before the place is opened. So here you've got a bunch of locals all lined up. And the agent gets us out of the bus and marches us all the way to the front of the queue. I was feeling a little self-conscious because I could see all the locals were lining up there and obviously had been waiting for the whole morning and we just arrive and they're shuffling us all the way to the front. I wasn't too um, you know, comfortable with that, but hey, this is, this is what it is. And we were paying top dollar. I'll tell you how much it all costs in the end. So <clears throat> they take us to the front. They lead us up to the exam room. Now, the way the Chinese driver's license test works is you sit down in front of a computer, almost as if you're in like a schoolroom class, right? You all sit down in front of a computer, and it has a webcam on each computer that looks at you and watches you 
as you take the test to make sure you're not cheating, all right? Which is probably, probably a good idea, right? Anyway, so now we're sitting down and I'm fully expecting to sit down and take the test now and I've been preparing as much as I could. So I'm sitting down in front and just before we start, the middle-aged woman said, okay, now you must cooperate with us. So don't talk, don't do anything. Look at the, the computer screen and pretend that you're very serious. Something along those lines. I'm ad libbing a bit here. Um, you know, this was like nine, nine years ago. <laughs> anyway, so there we are. So everyone's a little confused, but that's what we do. So we sit there and we're staring at the screen, looking serious. Everyone trying not to like, part, like pack out laughing or whatever. Now, all of a sudden, this little guy on a little wheelie, wheelie chair, like a little stool, he slides up to the guy next to me grabs his mouse, just out of the view of the webcam, grabs the guy's mouse, rapid fire, answers all of the questions in less than a minute, because he, he knows them off by heart, obviously. Bam, 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 slides over to my table, reaches around just outside of the view of this webcam looking at me, grabs my mouse, answers all the questions in less than a minute, goes around the whole classroom, does it for everybody, and then we're told, okay, time to leave. We all stand up, we all walk out, and they're like, you can pick up your license in a week. <laughs> That's how China works. You know, I haven't told this story, obviously, uh, for reasons of it being, number one, ridiculously embarrassing. And number two, I obviously didn't want to air this kind of nonsense that goes on in China. But you know what? It's time. It's time for me to tell these stories. I think they're funny. I think it gives you a good insight into how China works and also why there's so many bad drivers on the road there. Like, no joke. Everyone's buying their damn licenses. Anyway, let me get down to how much this thing cost. Um, in total, I was charged 6,000 RMB. And that is the equivalent of about 1,000 US dollars to get my license. Um, and that included like translation fees and, and whatnot, and uh, translating my name and all that. Obviously, from what I've heard anyway, it's getting harder and harder for these kind of things to happen. Corruption is being clamped down on all the time. But this being China, I can promise you that when corruption and so on is clamped down on, all it means is that you pay more. And in fact, recently, somebody else I know went through a similar thing, but they obviously clamped down in the Guangdong area. So what they were doing is they were flying them out to Hainan. So it's the same deal. Instead of going to a, a funny little village place to get your license done, People were being put on a plane and domestically flown to a completely different city somewhere else to get it done instead. But the last I heard, it was costing about 19,000 RMB, which is a hell of a lot more to get your license done. Now, of course, I don't see why anyone would really have to go through all that sort of effort if they could just sit and do the test. And to be fair, it's gotten a lot easier. I heard that the English has improved and that they now have like proper English questions. But at the same time, the red tape's increasing as well. So to get your driver's license in China, um, it's one of those things that I personally would advise against. Number one, because driving in China really is not worth it. Um, anyone who's done it for any length of time will probably agree. It opens you up to so many possible hazards. I'm not just talking about the dangers on the road. Um, I'm talking about the possibility of getting yourself into legal troubles. Fines being sent in the mail, people scamming you, getting into accidents and putting yourself in debt because of the sort of uh, compensation scam culture thing that goes on there. There's all sorts of things, and never mind just the frustration of uh, driving in Chinese traffic. So, that's my funny little story of how I got my Chinese driver's license. I can't wait to see you guys next week where we'll be taking this beast out. I can finally reveal it to you all. We're going to be driving through the sun, palm trees, seaside. I'm going to tell you about some of the closest calls I had and show you some footage of some of the closest calls I had driving in China. And I'm going to tell you about the difference in the car culture between China and the USA. And in fact, every other Western country I've been to. So until next time, guys, you know the drill, as always. Stay awesome. And please don't forget that you can catch another Serpent today every single Monday. No, what am I saying? Every single Friday.
Same time, same place. If Monday is for ADV China, which is the most important one, and that's why it came to mind first. And uh, Wednesday, you can check out my mate Lawa86 over on his channel. And please don't forget our podcast. Guys, a quick little note before I sign off. Um, I know what's going down in Hong Kong right now is a, is a massive thing. And uh, I'm glad that I get to speak about it a little bit more over on the ADV Podcasts channel like I did yesterday. Um, it's, it's probably the best way for me to discuss more current events. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on and have more long-form discussion, please go check out our ADB Podcasts channel. On top of that, you can also listen to it on all the usual crap like iTunes and Spotify and whatnot. So just search for ADV Podcasts. Anyway, I'll see you next time.